Please be seated.
I think I got the message loud and clear. Everybody wanted me to take an extra lap, so. Good evening. What a beautiful afternoon for a graduation for the class of 2022. Welcome to the 137th commencement ceremonies of Chester Academy. My name is John Flanagan. I'm the principal of Chester Academy and your master of ceremonies for this evening. At this time, I would like to welcome Leah Rios, Brian Connell, and Jacob Angelis to please come forward to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to recognize these students as they come forward tonight as they've enlisted after graduation to join the United States Armed Forces. Jacob Jacob Angelis will be enlisting in the United States Air Force, Leah Rios in the United States Navy, and Brian Cannell will be following in his older brother's footsteps and attending the United States Air Force Academy. Congratulations. At this time, I ask everyone to please stand and remove your hats for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd also like to welcome up to the podium uh, Emma Fiore, a senior with an amazing voice who will lead us tonight in our national anthem. So we'll ask everyone once again to please stand and welcome Emma Fiore. You go right in the middle. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. A big round of applause for Emma Fiore. You may be seated. As I said tonight, it, it is a beautiful afternoon. I know some of you were calling it a little nervous. We had a couple of drops early on, but I was pretty confident. I tweeted Ben Knoll. He told me it would all be okay, and here we are. So as we begin tonight's ceremony, I'd like to start by welcoming some distinguished members of our community who are joining us here tonight for this proud celebration. From the Chester Academy Board of Education, our Board of Education President, Frank Sambitz. Our Vice President, Sandy Nagler. Trustees, Don Guevara. John Pashnick. Unable to be here in attendance, Mr. Keith Bridewiser. Future member of the Board of Education, starting soon, Mrs. Kim DiCurcio. And unable to join us today, but, but emailing us and sending us her regards, Ms. Caroline Nagersmith, who will be joining as well. I'd like to uh, introduce our school administration, who worked so hard. Um, introducing for one last time as our superintendent, a man who means a great deal to me, Mr. Dennis Petrolek. 
Our assistant superintendent is not able to come here tonight because her own daughter is graduating, but she sends her regards, Ms. Kathy O'Hara. Our director of PPS, Ms. Rachel Loftus. Our director of technology, Mr. Ed Spence. Our elementary school principal, uh, Ms. Mary Kate Bosch. And our director of buildings and grounds, Mr. Matt DeRosa. Also unable to join us here tonight because his child is graduating as well, Mr. Aguilar, our assistant principal and athletic director. I'd like to give a big welcome and, and say thank you for joining us here tonight from the Greenwood Lake Board of Education, the Board of Ed President, Mr. Matt Buckley. And sending her regards tonight, the Superintendent of the Greenwood Lake Union Free School District, Sarah Haddon. From Senator Skoufis' office, joining us here tonight, uh, Mr. Mike Anastakis is here tonight. I think I did a much better job this year with the name than last year, Mike. Um, from the Town of Chester Police Department, Chief Dan Dolinger. And from the Village of Chester Police Department, Chief Tim McGuire. Tonight we celebrate the successes of our graduates, but I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize all the people who are responsible for our graduates being here tonight. From the first day of school to graduation day, our teachers have been there for our students to provide academic instruction and support and many learning uh, opportunity and life lessons. Will all members of the faculty and staff that are here tonight please stand and be recognized at this time. And although I, I've mentioned his name before, at this time I'd also like to take a moment to recognize a very special retiree after 37 years in public education and he being here at Chester for over eight years, our superintendent of schools, retiring after 37 years, Mr. Dennis Petrolek. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, I'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, any special guests, representatives, and community organizations that are awarding scholarships or awards to our graduates. Your ongoing support is deeply and sincerely appreciated. And some of our representatives that we have here tonight are joining us, Cole Greco, his aunt, Lisa Giglio, Ms. Sue Barberi, Maureen and Dan Mulvey, We'll find Dan, he's somewhere. Sue Barron, a favorite here at Chester Academy and one of our retired teachers, Mr. Keith Bandora. I'd like to thank each and every member of this crowd that also participated in the PTSA. Our PTSA is truly one of the most amazing organizations that supports us, whatever we need from yesterday's uh, barbecue during rehearsal to when they were here at field day. They are here doing everything to support our kids and I can't thank you enough. So if you are a part of the PTSA, I know Julie's here, I know Mrs. Volkmer's here and Mrs. Newfer and anyone else that is part of the PTSA, please stand for recognition. And now most importantly, I'd also like to thank and congratulate the parents guardians, and other family members who've helped raise and support our students through the years. You have raised incredible young men and women who have already begun to make a positive impact in our world, and tonight is your night to show your pride. So will all the parents please rise so we can recognize you. And I think that means all the students should be standing and applauding for the parents and guardians. I'd also like to thank a few other people who have been very instrumental in just getting us here as a class. First, I'd like to recognize our senior class advisor, Mr. Pat Higgins. Our school secretaries who did a tremendous amount to help out tonight, uh, Ms. Kathy Battiato and Kim Fusco. 
the secretary to the superintendent of schools who is so instrumental in helping set up every aspect of this, uh, of the, uh, of this ceremony tonight, Ms. Joanne Velastro, and Joanne's around here somewhere. Our guidance secretary, Ms. Patty Goodrich. School Secretary, Ms. Donna Hart, who is here also tonight chaperoning and helping out. I'd like to thank our band director who's here tonight to work with our band, uh, Mr. Aiden O'Connor, who stepped in to help out this year, who is also a former salutatorian here at Chester from several years back. And I saw, and I was, my, my eyes, I was so surprised and excited to see that our, that our our band director, who is on leave right now, is here to support the kids tonight, and that's Deb Hyseni, who is here as well. Our technology consultants, Nick Patel and John Szynski, for all the work along with the tech team that they did tonight to help us get set. Our sound engineer, Abraham, and for our photographer, Mr. Tom LaBarba, who's running around taking pictures right now. I said thank you to Matt DeRosa, but also there are a lot of other people that work with Matt and help support this ceremony. Those are the members of our Buildings and Grounds Department who did a tremendous amount of work to get everything set up. Thank you. And although I didn't write it down, I'd like to thank for showing up as well members of the local police departments that are here tonight to, to help us out and supervise and our safety officers. So now my remarks to our graduates, to the class of 2022. And you'll see me, I occasionally like to look around. I feel like I, I need to be talking to somebody here. So I'll be honest, in preparing for this speech, I went back and forth on, uh, you know, on the message that I was really looking to send. And after almost 20 years of attending graduation ceremonies and listening to many different speeches, finding the right topic to talk about, just, it really wasn't just jumping off the page at me this year. I kept thinking about all the great things you guys have done, and I couldn't really focus myself on one specific topic. So I said, you know, I know I have a lot of people that I've spoken to over the last few months that have said to me, I don't know where I'm going to be. I'm not sure exactly what I wanted to do and seem nervous about it. So it got me thinking about some of the lessons that I learned upon high school graduation that I had experienced. You see, I'll be honest, I don't want to shock anyone here, but I was not the top performing student when I was in high school. Um, in fact, I think my old teachers from Washingtonville High School are still looking for that extra point on the chemistry regions to get me through. I started off my college experience not having a clue what I wanted to do, but I went to SUNY Cobleskill, which was a great school, and I majored in liberal arts. And what I really took from that experience is I really learned how to study. I really learned how to start to focus on what was important in my ac academics. From there, I transferred to SUNY New Pulse to major in business. And as a business major, I never realized that I would need to start to take those higher level math classes as well. And in case you don't know me, let's just say math and I never truly got along. Um, so at that time, I transferred to SUNY Cortland and I majored in communications. I can't mention SUNY Cortland without telling everyone that I really enjoyed SUNY Cortland. I mean, I really enjoyed SUNY Cortland. Um, and as much as I really enjoyed SUNY Cortland, I left with a degree and I felt really good about it, but at the same time, I did not have a real plan at that point. I hadn't had figured out what I wanted to do. I got out of college and I worked a bunch of different jobs upon graduating. I was a stock guy at Timberland at Woodbury Commons. I was an intern at a radio station in New York City. I was a celebrity assistant, a production assistant at a cable TV network. I sold gym memberships at Gold's Gym in Newburgh, and I went into the New York State Police Academy. And in all of that, it wasn't the right fit for me. I couldn't find the exact thing that was going to be perfect. And, and when, I, when I left the State Police Academy, I decided to go back to school and give teaching a try. I had spoken to a few teachers, and they said, your love of history, your love of social studies is something that you should really share with people. So I started taking classes back at Mount St. Mary College and then became a substitute teacher. And after graduating, I found my first job actually at Washingtonville High School as a social studies teacher, which is a place that I had mentioned earlier as I was as a student. I had vowed never to return there again once I graduated, by the way. Um, it took me over eight years from the time that I graduated high school until the time that I truly found what I wanted to do. So, you know, 
it, it, it was, I was at a place where I decided, you know, that I, that I started working at, that I at one point had said I would never go back to. So you don't necessarily always know where you're going to be headed and where life's going to take you. If you would have told a 17-year-old John Flanagan that I would become a teacher, dean, assistant principal, and principal in my career, I would have told you you were crazy. Um, it took me time to figure things out. I had ups and downs. I made mistakes. I listened and I learned. That being said, for every student that's sitting out here today that didn't get a specific grade on a specific test or in a certain course, or maybe you didn't get into your first college or your college of your dreams, or you're sitting in your seat scared to death right now about what may lie ahead for you, I say to you, it's okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to figure it out. You may change your path. You're going to have difficulties, but you just need to keep pushing ahead. One of my favorite songs of all time, the lead singer Stephen Perry of Journey legendarily belts out, oh, and you all know what I'm going to say right here, don't stop believing. Somebody, some of you probably want to sing it right now. Go right ahead, do you want to sing that? Uh, don't stop believing. So if there's a message that I'm looking to send to you today, it would be that hard work pays off and dreams can come true. Don't stop believing and life will be good to you. Congratulations and good luck to the class of 2022. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our salutatorian for the class of 2022, Mr. Noah M. Noah. <laughs> Noah will be attending Princeton University in the upcoming fall and will be majoring in molecular biology. Noah plans on pursuing a pre-medical path during his undergraduate studies. He hopes to eventually attend medical school and become an oncologist, a physician that specifies in the treatment of cancer. He was inspired, um, to, he was inspired by his own experiences in life, and Noah has, aspires to someday help others in, w that are dealing with similar situations. He is the president of the National Honor Society and the Key Club, a section leader in the high school band, and jazz band, the captain of the varsity soccer team and varsity track and field team. Noah enjoys reading, spending time with his families and dogs, and participating and uh, practicing musical instruments. He had a rank of second in the class with a 100.44 GPA, and it is my honor to introduce Mr. Noah M. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Noah M, and it's an honor being able to speak to you all tonight. Thank you all for coming to this ceremony. I'd like to first and foremost congratulate the class of 2022 for this great achievement. Congratulations to everyone. As I'm sure everyone here can relate, high school was a life-changing experience. Though it has been difficult and challenging at times, I believe that it was an experience that, similar to graduation, is a step in our journeys towards adulthood. And though I'm sure that this is a topic not unique amongst previous graduations, nor those to come in the future, I feel that I wouldn't be doing our high school experience justice without mentioning the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic was a difficult time for everyone in the world. I'd like to offer my sincere acclamation towards the students gathered here today for making it through such strenuous times without ever faltering in their desires to learn and to grow. I'd also like to display my gratitude to the teachers here today. I know that more than anyone else, the pandemic was a time of unimaginable stress and challenge that you all managed to overcome for our sake. Thank you. <coughs> As you all continue onwards with your lives, I sincerely hope that you are able to live lives that are truly worthy of the characters that I know you all to have. When I say that I want everyone to live lives that are worthy, I speak not of wealth, fame, status, nor anything else of the sort. Rather, I want to emphasize my wholehearted belief that a person's worth is determined not by their achievements, no, but by their intentions and by their efforts. Strive to be good people. Strive to make the world a better place. 
strive to help others. I believe that it is living with these values and with these beliefs that makes a person worthy. Before I end, I'd like to take advantage of what I consider one of the biggest advantages to being able to speak in front of so many people, which is that I am able to leave you all with something, whether it be a lesson, advice, or something similar. On that note, I'd like to give you all a quote. It is a Persian adage, and I believe that in only four words, this is a quote with great simplicity and beauty. It is something that is applicable in moments of both the greatest joys and crippling despairs. The adage simply states, and I quote, this too shall pass. Let me repeat, this too shall pass. In only four short words, I feel that this perfectly summarizes all life experiences. We see it in action here today. Whether it is the culmination of the four fun and exciting years of our youth that we call high school, or the trying times that was the pandemic, everything comes to pass, the good and the bad. So is it a proverb of optimism or one of pessimism? The answer is neither. Rather, in times of joy, it reminds us to live in the present and to live with gratitude. Concomitantly, in times of despair, it helps to give us strength, reminding us to persevere. But for today, at this moment, let it be applicable regarding the former, serving as a reminder of gratitude. Graduation is a time of celebration, and I hope that everyone is able to be fully conscious and appreciative of this time of commemoration and happiness. Finally, I'd like to end my speech the same way I began, with a huge congratulations to everyone graduating today. I wish you all the best of luck with whatever life brings forth. Thank you. And we'd like to present Noah with, uh, with a token uh, on behalf of, of the school administration, staff, and the class of 2022. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. All kinds of gifts for you here. At this time, I'd like to introduce Aidan O'Connor, Dev Hyseni, the work that they have done in preparing our Chester Academy Band with their rendition of Lean On Me. And we'll give our seniors a couple of seconds to get over there.
Thank you very much. Give a big round of applause once again to the Chester Academy Band and Ms. Deb Hyseni. At this time, I would like to introduce our superintendent of schools to say a few words, Mr. Dennis Petrolek. That was beautiful. Great job, band. Good afternoon, esteemed members of the Boards of Education of Chester and Greenwood Lake. Honored guest, Mr. Flanagan, and all of the members of our faculty and staff, parents and guardians, family members, and last but not least, members of the class of 2022. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to address our graduates at this important milestone in their lives. Before I direct my remarks to the graduates, I would like to acknowledge and express our most sincere gratitude and congratulations to our seniors' parents and guardians. Raising a child into a responsible young adult is a demanding and ceaseless work, especially during a global pandemic and in a post-pandemic world. Congratulations on a job well done. <laughs> to the class of 2022, in preparation for this address, I was reviewing my notes from your sixth grade orientation back in August of 2015. During that presentation, I spent some time talking about respect and responsibility and the concept of team. Together, everyone achieves more. We also talked about some other important items, like how to open your locker and how to get to class on time. And we talked about making the most of your time at school, because time moves quickly and before you know it, you'll be graduating from Chester Academy. Well, time did move quickly, except for the past two years, and here you are, graduating from Chester Academy. As you get ready for this next phase in your life, your concerns are more serious than opening a locker and getting to class on time. Your thoughts are on your future and include work, college, the military, or the unknown. Regardless, of what your future path may be, you will all be asking yourself if you will be able to make it, if you will be successful. And if you are really ready to move out into that big, wide open and sometimes scary world. Well, I'm here to tell you that the answer to these questions is yes. Yes, you can do it if you remember some important lessons that you have learned during your time here. Some of those lessons involve respecting yourself and others and taking responsibility for your actions and your future. Those lessons also include the concept of team and the acknowledgement that we all need the support, cooperation, and encouragement of others. And in turn, we need to be there for others who need our support. These were some of the lessons that I hoped that I helped to teach you here through my efforts at Chester Academy. But there were many more life lessons that I hope you learned here at the Academy. Many of those important lessons were recently celebrated at an event that was held here several weeks ago. This event highlighted people among us, students and staff, who are the embodiment of some of life's most important lessons. It is said that actions speak louder than words. And the actions of those celebrated at this year's Hambos Make a Difference are living examples of what it takes to be successful and make a difference in the lives of others. I would like to take some time to reflect on the lessons taught by the lives of these special people who are nominated by you, the students, the staff, and the Chester Academy School community. You might say that the lessons embodied by these Hambos who made a difference are a people's choice life lessons. 
I did an analysis of the nominations for this award. For my analysis, I reviewed each of the nominations for the Hambos Make a Difference and identified the main reason behind their nomination. Altogether, there were 95 different qualities or characteristics, and I'm going to go through every one of them tonight. Just kidding. There were 95 qualities or characteristics that were cited, but some of them were repeated over and over again. And I would like to call these your top 10 people's choice life lessons. So here is a list of the top characteristics identified, you, identified by you, the Chester students and community, as being the most important qualities in making a difference in the lives of others. Number 10, and this was a tie, be dedicated, be engaged, and be patient. Be dedicated and committed to what you do and to those you care about. Be actively engaged. Do not sit idly by. Get involved. Understand that people are not perfect and that the best things in life take time and effort. So be patient with things and people that you care about. Number nine, be energetic and be positive. And this had six different mentions. Have enthusiasm and passion for what you do. Maintain a positive outlook and always look on the bright side. The dark side is always there and can drag you down if you let it, but a positive attitude will lift you and those around you. Number eight, be friendly. And this was mentioned by seven people. Life can be challenging and we all need a friend to support us in good times and especially during bad times. Be open and friendly to others. Your friendship may be the one thing that keeps another person going in life. Number seven, be a good listener. This had nine mentions. Some of you are probably surprised to learn that this is so important to people. Everyone wants to be understood, acknowledged, and validated. Everyone needs someone to talk to, and more importantly, someone to listen. You were born with two ears and one mouth and should listen twice as much as you speak. And by the way, Listening means working hard to understand. So being a good listener means listening and understanding. Number six, be inspiring. And this had 12 separate mentions. You have the power to be an important role model for others. Live your life so that your friends and family can be proud of you and find inspiration for greatness within themselves. Number five, be motivational mentioned by 14 different people. Understand that your words of encouragement for others have great power. Even the most successful people deal with challenges and need reassurance and support from others. We all get stuck at one point or another and need help from others to get past obstacles. Find ways to lift others past life's challenges with encouraging words and actions. Number four, be helpful. This had 15 mentions. Be there for others in times of need. Offer to lend a hand before someone even asks for it. Be that trusted and reliable person that thinks of others before themselves. Number three, be kind. This had 16 mentions out of 95. Be accepting, be welcoming, and non judgmental. Be compassionate and responsive to the needs of others. Be relaxed, nurturing, and uplifting. Be generous with your spirit and possessions. Number two, be fun to be around. 17 different nominators indicated fun as a leading characteristic. So what does this mean to be fun? I think what it means is that we all like to be and need to be around people who are positive and energetic, people who don't take themselves too seriously and can find enjoyment in life. People who live life to its fullest and are passionate and enthusiastic. People who make you smile and laugh and make you feel good about yourself. Be that fun person. Bring your positivity and energy into everything that you do. Find enjoyment and fun in life and brighten the lives of everyone around you. And number one, people's choice for making a difference, be supportive. This had 23 different mentions. So one out of every four nominators mentioned being supportive. 
Being supportive incorporates many of the characteristics that we have already covered. But more than any of those other qualities, being, support, being supportive conveys an important feeling of safety and security in others. A supportive person is always there for you in good times and bad. A supportive person makes me think of a trust fall where a person closes their eyes and falls backwards, knowing and trusting that others will catch them. We all need supportive people in our lives to catch us when we fall. And if you can support others, you can make a true difference in the lives of them, and your life will be richer and more fulfilling for you in return. So these are the top 10 characteristics of people who make a difference according to you. Be dedicated, engaging, and patient. Be positive and energetic. Be friendly and be a good listener. Be motivational and inspiring. Helpful, kind, and encouraging. Have fun and be fun to be around. And be supportive of others. If you do these things and treat other people responsibly and respectfully, you will be successful, live a rich and fulfilling life, and make a difference in our world according to the lessons of Mr. Petrolak and the Chester Academy School community. In closing, as you know, I will be retiring at the end of this month, and I hope and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Chester and Greenwood Lake communities for your support over the years. And there's that word again, support. Over my past years as middle school and high school principal, uh, I've had great experiences here in Chester. In my 37 years in public education, I've been in many different settings, schools, school districts in Chester, Orange County, New York City, and on Long Island. And Chester will always remain a very special place in my heart because of the kind and beautiful people and their support for quality education in this community. Thank you, Chester, and congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you, Mr. Petrolak. Our next speaker is the President of the Board of Education for the Chester Union Free School District, Mr. Frank Sambitz. I promise I'll be brief. They told me I had 38 minutes to do my speech, so. Good evening, parents, guardians, families. This is always a great honor to be able to speak before the graduating class, and this year is no different. First, I'd like to say to Mr. Flanagan, I think we all can agree you made the right career choice. <clears throat> so on behalf of the Board of Education, let me begin with a huge congratulations to the class of 2022. It goes without saying, although we've probably said it quite a few times tonight, these have been the most interesting and challenging times, not only in education, but in the world in general. Here at Chester, we've gone from temp checks, box lunches, Chromebook education, and perhaps from some of you, we know who you are, wrestling for that last roll of toilet paper at the ShopRite. Then we went back to full classrooms. We took off those masks. We served hot lunches. And we finally got to see smiling faces. And I just heard, just when you think the pandemic may be over, you may be wrestling for the next jar of mustard at the shop right for your graduation parties. So make sure you get there early. But all of you graduates to a person have taken these challenges in stride. You've adapted to every twist and turn from the marvels of remote learning, social distancing, and you know that list goes on and on and on. But you made it. You're a group of very accomplished students, as Noah said, who've taken these last two and a half years of pandemic education, and most importantly, pandemic life, 
with grace, compassion for others, and a de determination to reach the finish line. We commend each and every one of you and your parents and your families and your support systems and more importantly, your incredible teachers and counselors for banding together to help reach this goal. As we gather here tonight to honor this amazing class, it's not any surprise to any of the members of the Board of Education why we are here. And that's because our district has had a leader that exemplifies those characteristics that our senior class continues to demonstrate. So once again, please help me thank Mr. Dennis Petrolak upon his retirement from the Chester School District. <laughs> Dennis brought a renewed focus of pride and professionalism to everything we do behind the scenes, to the movement of our students entering our building at the very moment they arrive. From academy principal to superintendent of schools, his attention to detail, a laser focus on what matters, is just the tip of the iceberg of a man like Dennis Petrolak. No matter if it were a computer infrastructure collapse that is easy to forget about because of a global pandemic, Dennis's steady hand, uncanny ability to calm all of those around him, including five members of the Board of Education, made even those calamities seem like something we could conquer. And because of all of you, we did. Finally, and most importantly, I'd like to thank Dennis for his, you heard it a few minutes ago, his compassion and real pure humanity that he brought here every day. Dennis is inspired by his mom to become a teacher. And it's the teacher in him that's at the forefront of every conversation, every meeting, and most importantly, at the core of every action he took on behalf of the students of Chester. As board members, every single one of us learned from Dennis because that teacher exists, like I said, in everything he does. Dennis, you have made a huge difference in the lives of Chester. Thank you. And I think more importantly, it'll be a lasting impact on all the lives of all of us to continue. So thank you again. And to our graduates, as school board members, we sit here and look at all of you, looking sharp in your caps and gowns. And what's so heartwarming to all of us is all those examples you heard from Mr. Petrolak, and you heard from me tonight, and you heard from Noah, those are the examples of leadership that we see from you sitting in your caps and gowns, reflecting back at all of us. So thank you. So as you go on in your lives, I'm going to ask you all, I say it at every graduation, to take chances. Take every opportunity that presents itself to you. Take every one of Mr. Petrolak's examples every day in your life. And most of all, I'm going to ask you to be kind. Be involved. This world, this country needs all of you. Be involved. Be an activist. But be compassionate. And like you heard from Mr. Petrolak, make a difference. And please remember and never forget your roots here in Chester. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you, Mr. Sambitz. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct honor to present to you the valedictorian of the class of 2022, Ms. Emily Petromal. Emily will be attending SUNY Onteonta in the fall and majoring in Adolescent Education Mathematics 
Emily has always had a passion for teaching, and her heart truly lies in the classroom. She has spent the last year working with Mrs. Burton and her middle school AIS class, gaining real-life insight into the world of teaching. Emily is an active member of the community, dedicating her Wednesday and Thursday nights to volunteering at the Florida Community Pantry, Food Pantry. She has been a volunteer there since uh, the spring of her freshman year and has accrued over 600 hours of volunteer service. Wow. Her goal is not just to make a difference in students' lives within the classroom, but also to support her community. Emily enjoys summer days at the beach, oh, won't we all, um, and paddle boarding in the bay, but more uh, on, the, on the snowboard and more on snowboarding during the winter. She is a member of the National Honor Society, the high school band, the marching band, the cooking club, the peer tutoring program, and she is ranked first in her class with an overall average of 100.5. I present to you the valedictorian of the class of 2022, Emily Petromal. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming tonight. Today is an exciting day. It's a day to celebrate and remember forever a day that many of us have been waiting for since we entered kindergarten. I honestly can't believe that we are here. Our journey at Chester Academy started seven years ago when we were just little troublesome sixth graders. I remember looking up to the high schoolers at the time, both literally and academically, wondering if our class would ever make it to graduation. It seemed so far away, but looking back on it now, the years flew by. I think that's something important to remember as we embark on our next chapter of our lives. It always seems impossible until it's done. After all, you can't spell impossible without possible. For many of us, we have been together since kindergarten. Over the past 13 years, we have grown together, struggled together, made mistakes together, built lifelong friendships, and made unforgettable memories together. Some of those memories are from funny study hall banter or goofing off at the lunch table, while others occurred through a screen. In the matter of one year, we went from absolutely no technology, literally old school paper, pencil, and chalkboard, to nothing but technology, six feet away, of course. For some of us, that meant holding our phones at an angle so that just our foreheads were visible while we lay in bed. And for others, it meant completely knocking out during class, only to be woken up by the teacher yelling your name since you didn't leave the Google Meet. Our high school experience was definitely one for the books, but I wouldn't trade it for anything because it shaped us into the people we are today. We persevered through it all and came out even stronger. Up until tonight, we have all been traveling on the same path. But today marks the day where our path splits into 87 unique roads. Now, I'm sure that most of my classmates will join me in saying that we have absolutely no idea how to actually build a road. But it's important to remember that throughout our education, we have not just learned how to solve for X, all the different parts of the cell, what each branch of government is responsible for, or where the comma belongs. And just in case you were wondering, Mr. Ellers, there should have been one before the or. We have learned about ourselves, the people that we want to become, and what a successful road really entails. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. Every person, teacher, administrator, boss, or peer who comes into and out of our life will teach us something. It's up to us to decide what we learn from them. I'm going to share a few of the lessons that teachers have taught us along the way. Mr. Marsilio is a constant reminder to never give up or stop trying. Ms. Ramos is proof that no challenge is too big to tackle as long as your heart is in it. If you don't have as much enthusiasm and passion for your job as Senora Alavente does, then you're doing something wrong. Ms. Edwards has shown us all that a little support goes a long way. Ms. Hyseni and Ms. Barreto's sweet personalities are a reminder of how powerful kindness truly is. Mr. Stover's many life lessons have taught us never to order hot chocolate at the coffee cart. Ms. Garcia's classroom made us realize the importance of embracing who we are and becoming the best possible version of ourselves. 
Some teachers have even shown us the people that we want to become. I have Ms. Burton, Ms. Nelting, and Ms. Caraba to thank for that. I encourage you to take a moment and think about the teacher who had the most impact on your life. And while I have you thinking, I want you to consider this. Whenever someone delivers a speech, they always read their perfected final draft. But how do you think that speech started and all the other ones you heard today, including mine for that matter? Well, they started out as a blank piece of paper. That is exactly what you have right now, a blank piece of paper. The only thing on it is a heading that reads, Chester Academy, Class of 2022 graduate. You have the opportunity to fill that piece of paper with anything your heart desires. As you start writing, I want you to remember a few things. One, you are writing in pen. And two, if you fail, never give up. Now I know that everyone here has probably heard that line from their parents at least a million times. But did you ever stop and think about why? Here's the reason. The word fail really stands for first attempt in learning. Success never comes without failure because failure gives us the opportunity to bounce back and learn from our mistakes. We can't just end after we fail because end really stands for effort never dies. Even if you get no as an answer, remember that no means next opportunity. As Mr. Trout taught us all in sixth grade, nothing worthwhile ever comes easy. Now, we have reached the end of an error, and while it is bittersweet, this is only the beginning. Thank you to all of the family members, friends, teachers, school faculty and staff, and administrators who have supported us along this journey. We could not have done it without you. Congratulations to the class of 2022, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. And for Emily, congratulations on being our valedictorian. We have a little gift we'd like to give you and say thank you on behalf of the staff, administration, and the class of 2022. We say thank you. And Emily, you are correct. My speech did start with a blank page, too. And as I started to write, it wasn't pretty for a while. So, so at this time, I'd like to welcome up members of the Chester and Greenwood Lake Boards of Education to the stage, along with members uh, of our, our superintendent of schools, Mr. Petrolek, as well as Mrs. Barreto, uh, Mrs. McKenzie, and Ms. Sterneman, as we will call the graduates. So let's let, let everybody get in place. Emily Lydia Petramal. Emily has received the Chester Teachers Association Scholarship, the Lumen W. Smith Memorial Award, the Rudolph Valet Memorial Science Scholarship Award, and Sugarloaf Engine Engine Company Award. Noah M. 
Noah has received the Chester Teachers Association Scholarship, the Henry W. and Joan T. Ruback Memorial Award, the Key Club Service Award, and the Lumen W. Smith Memorial Award. Alexandria Charlotte Cord. Alexandria has received the Chester Kiwanis Humanities Award and the Jake Deere Memorial Scholarship. Brian Connell. Brian has received the Board of Education Graduation Award. Nicholas J. DiCurcio. Nicholas has received the Nicole Greco Wrestling Scholarship, and he has also earned the rank of Eagle Scout. Maria E. Greslack. Equa D. Ose Quanin. <laughs> Robert Thomas Santangelo, Jr. Robert has earned the Ladders of Hope Award and the Lori Horaz Fedor Memorial Award, and he has also earned the rank of Eagle Scout. Carly Emma Weinberger. Carly has earned the Key Club Service Award, the Alyssa Barberi Memorial Scholarship, and the Salvatore Trena Memorial Award. Gianna Wells. Gianna has earned the Key Bank Award. Amber Lee Diaz Espinosa. Amber has earned the Alyssa Barberi Memorial Service Award. Maya Madison Alonzo. <laughs> Nicholas A. Anello. Nicholas has earned the Chester Kiwanis Vocational Technical Award. Nicholas has also earned the rank of Eagle Scout. Brandon D. Angelus Galindo. Jacob L. Angelus. Noah Luis Angeles. Omari S. Anson. Richard Botang. Richard has earned the Harriet H. Fowler Award.
Queen N. Brown. Queen has earned the Chester Elementary School PTA Academic Improvement Award and the Making a Difference Multicultural Club Award. Shamika P. N. Butler. Shamika has earned the Making a Difference Multicultural Club Award. Christian R. Cass. Uriel Cazares Quinto. Uriel has earned the Trade Trans Corporation Scholarship. Rachel Marie Chabot. <laughs> Sarai Chavez Flores. Sarai has earned the Catherine Chumaki Memorial Award. Tiffany Danieleski. Yes. Tiffany has earned the Alyssa Barberi Memorial Scholarship. Yes. Michael Christopher Doyle. Yes. Luke P. Dalgarian. Damani S. Dunkley. Damani is also receiving the Chester Academy PTSA Positive Influence Award. Madison Carlotta Everett. Madison is also receiving the Greenwood Lake PTSA Scholarship. Caroline M. Farrell. Caroline is also receiving the Chester Academy PTSA Community Award, Nicole Greco Memorial Scholarship, and the Alyssa Barberi Memorial Scholarship. Grace E. Feast. Emily Catherine Elizabeth Fiore. Jaquin J. Gonzalez. Molly Maeve Gorman. <laughs> Hannah Rose Griffin. Michael Anthony Garasio. Samuel Anthony Guardiola. Samuel is also receiving the Lawrence J. Norwood Memorial Award. Deanna Marie Guevara.
Carolyn Christine Harvey. Carolyn is also receiving the Alyssa Barberi Memorial Scholarship and the Danny Mulvey Award. Marissa Harrell. Marissa is also receiving the Greenwood Lake Lions Club Scholarship. <laughs> Olivia, oop, just kidding. Sakai Demetrius James. <laughs> Olivia Grace Cat. <laughs> Alyssa Mary Kreischer. Alyssa is receiving the Chester Golden Age Club Award and Ruth Parkin Carroll Memorial Scholarship. Anaya Spirit Lamb. Jessica Lang. Jake Laura Elijah J. Lacante. Elijah is receiving the Officer Douglas Mackey Memorial Scholarship Award. Gianni Noemi Ledesma. Janelle Isabella Lopez. James a. Lusignan. James is also receiving the Chester Teachers Association Scholarship and the Salvatore Trena Memorial Award. Sarah Elizabeth Massey. <laughs> Avian Kimberly Maxwell. Avian's receiving the former Supervising Principal slash Superintendent's Award. <laughs> Cooper Logan Malone. <laughs> Dylan T. Miller Cruz. Dylan is receiving the Lieutenant Lewis Allen Memorial Scholarship, and he also received the Paul Vanderan Memorial Scholarship for Technical Mastery in Computer Programming. Devante Manaya. Jaden Matthew Miranda. Elena Morales. Lily Morales. Nicole Elizabeth Munoz. Nicole is receiving the Center for Prayer and Meditation Scholarship. Ryan A. Murphy.
Jeter A. Nolasco. Christopher Oliveira. Christopher is receiving the Chester Kiwanis Vocational Technical Award. Pedro Isaias Oliveira. Samai N. Patel is also receiving the Richard W. Prosser Memorial Award. Ava Natalia Perez. Julius A. Perez. Lucas Quiroga. Nicholas D. Ramirez. Erica Nicole Ramos. Nicholas Eugene Randazzo the third Axel Reyes Justin Luke Richardson Leah P. Rios. Navy, Navy, Navy. <laughs> Adrian Rivera. Jaylee Marie Rodriguez. Christopher Rosa Manaya. <laughs> Eve Lord St. Ville. <laughs> Christopher E. Saldivar. Ryan J. Salerno, who's also receiving the Chester Alumni Scholarship. Loretta L. Seltzer Olson, also receiving the Ellen White Scholarship. Christopher Matthew Sharp. Thaddeus D. Szymanski. Alexa T. Tierney, who's also receiving the Coach Peter Ricard Memorial Scholarship. <laughs> Isabel Iris Trevisano. Tori Van Dunk. And Scott Michael Volkmer.
We're going to say in a couple of years, I'm going to need that little automatic lift to get me down off the stage here. So at this time, I'd like to ask our students, our prospective graduates, to please stand. Superintendent Petrolak, Board of Ed President Mr. Sambitz, and other members of the Board of Education, I hereby certify to you that the students before us have all satisfactorily completed their prescribed course of study for high school completion. Therefore, by the power vested in me by the New York State Department of Education and the Chester Board of Education, I hereby certify each of these students as, high, as a high school graduate. Students, you have earned the right to move your tassel from the right side of the cap to the left side. Please move your tassel now. Congratulations, class of 2022. Please be seated momentarily. Please be seated. I have a couple of quick notes for everyone before we, before we uh, conclude the ceremony. First, every student here tonight, there is an envelope for you that will be on our table on the way out. So everybody, please make sure to get your envelope. Also, the all-night graduation party committee, I will say that tomorrow night is the all-night graduation party. Everyone is encouraged to go. Make sure that you have signed the waiver. It is at Urban Air at, um, I believe, by 1030 you need to be there. So, uh, but the all-night graduation party the committee has provided a gift for everyone. If you did not get your gift yesterday, we have all the gift bags out there for you as well. And so thank you for that. Families, please be sure to take your lawn sign with you of your, of your child. Um, so you can, you can have that for, for Cape Seek here. And I would personally like to say congratulations to everyone here. You guys are an amazing group. You mean a lot to me. And I'm, I'm truly proud of you. So... Instead of a processing out, which we normally do, we thought we were outside, it's a beautiful night, we might want to get right with everybody and start taking pictures. So on that note, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Congratulations to the class of 2022. You did it. <laughs>